To get started programming with Java, we'll need a few things. First, a virtual machine. That's a free download from Sun's website. It's called the JRE, or Java Runtime Environment, and it allows your Java programs to run on any platform, such as Linux or Windows. Also, you're going to need what they call the JDK, or Java Development Kit. This is a suite of tools that comes with the command Java C. It allows you to take your plain ASCII source code and compile it into bytecode from the command prompt using a simple text editor. Also, I'd like you to download NetBeans. It's optional, but it's a very powerful IDE or integrated development environment that's also available for free from Sun Microsystems. And it has a lot of tools and very powerful features that make programming in Java a breeze. Okay, so I'm in Windows 7 right now. You could be in Linux or any other operating system with a web browser. I'm going to open up Internet Explorer or if you were you know, on a Mac, you could use Safari or you could use Firefox. I want to go to Sun's website, sun.com. And from here on the downloads page, notice I have several options on Sun's website. And these are all free downloads. Um, I could look under Java for your computer. And that's if you just wanted the JRE, Java Runtime Environment or Virtual Machine, to run Java applications in a browser or on your machine. I could download that here a bit. What we're interested in, since we're going to be developing and programming with Java, is this. I would go to Java for Developers. And on this link, or on this page, notice that I have the JDK, or Java Development Kit. And this would also include the runtime environment, or the virtual machine. And I can also download NetBeans, the integrated development environment. So you want to download these tools. After you've downloaded them and installed them, Remember to install them in this order. The runtime environment first, or the virtual machine. Second, install the JDK. And then third, install NetBeans. You'll want to test out your path, or, or system path, and see how things compile from the command prompt. So I'm simply going to go here, click on Start, and Run. Or if you don't have a Run shortcut in Windows 7 or Vista, you can simply go here and type Command. From here, I want to check and make sure it's in my system path. And you can type Path. And I see that the JDK is here in my system path. But also, I can test it. To run a Java application, I would use this command, Java. And if it's in my path, then I will get this output okay, from the virtual machine. Also, if the JDK is installed, the development kit, when I compile it with Java C, I should get this output. If for some reason you don't, you simply need to add it to your class path. And all you have to do is go here in Vista or Windows 7 or XP, I could right click on my computer, Advanced System Settings, and I need to set the environment variables. So under Advanced and under Environment Variables, I can come down here and add it to my system path. And if it were not already in there, I would put a semicolon, and I would just need to get the system path. So if I open up my computer and I go to my C drive, let's see where I have Java installed. So here's Sun. And I'm looking for the JDK. Here's the SDK on my machine. I use the defaults. The JDK is down here. And then in bin, what I want to tell my computer on my operating system is where to find Java, the virtual machine, and Java C, the compiler. So this is the path up here, Sun, SDK, JDK, bin. And I could just copy that, come over here, and paste it as an environment variable. And now, when I do that, and I click on OK and close it, I would be able to compile from the command prompt. It would be able to find it. Um, if you make the change, you may either have to reboot your machine if you don't want to manually edit your path file, um, or you could simply you know, use the command path from the command prompt, the old DOS command, and, and rewrite your path file. Easiest thing to do would probably be to reboot. Now, I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it again, but just letting you know that you would need to add that to your path. And then when I do that, I reboot, and again, to test it, before you get started, make sure that your, you know, both Java and Java C work from your command prompt. So again, I would type Java to test it. Okay, my virtual machine's up, and my path is set, and Java C to test the compiler. Again, my path is set. Okay, after you've installed the Java runtime environment or virtual machine and the JDK, the development kit, you want to install NetBeans. And the version I've downloaded here is 671. 
and this is what it looks like when we load it. Now, the first few projects we do, we're going to compile from the command prompt, just so we can see how that's done, and so that you can see that even without a fancy IDE, or integrated development environment like NetBeans, you can still write and compile programs in Java with something like Notepad or you know, Vim or you know, a Linux text editor, and just running the Java C command from the command prompt. However, when your programs get larger and more complex, you may desire to start using NetBeans and upgrade to a more sophisticated, more powerful, truly integrated development environment. NetBeans is loading up here and and this is sort of the default view here under NetBeans and notice there are various tools and menus and in addition to this um, I'm not limited to just Java. I mean, there are other, you know, it depends on what you download, but if you can download just a basic Java development environment with NetBeans, or, you know, I, in this case, I can do PHP, Ruby on Rails, or Ruby, C++. You know, there's, it's not just Java that this development environment can handle. So it's a very powerful tool, and, you know, it's one that it's under open source licensing, and you know, there are, are, are several items under the Genie Manifesto, so it's, it's available as a free download, and you can, you know, for, for absolutely no cost, begin, you know, developing applications in Java. Now I'm in Linux Ubuntu, and if I were going to install Java and set it up in Linux Ubuntu, I have several options. I could open up a web browser. And just like we did in Windows 7, I could go to Sun's website and download my tools there. And they have bin files, um, you know, tar archives, various Linux uh, files you can download, RPM packages if you're using a Red Hat flavor like Fedora. I could go to download and let me go here to Java for developers. And again, I could download the tools this way and grab the latest runtime environment in JDK. I also have several other options in Linux. Um, I could go and use the Synaptics package manager. And if I did that, um, I could do a search for JDK or JRE or even NetBeans. So let's say I want to download the JDK. You know, usually you'll be able to find that if you go with the default repository setup in terms of your packaging. Okay, so default JDK for the Java development kit. And there's several different ones to choose from, but I could also download NetBeans through Synaptics. And as another alternative, you can use app get. You know, if you like and you know, let's say I want to make sure I have the runtime environment. So to grab the virtual machine for Linux, might want to run update. updating my repositories with packages and let's see what do I need here and I need to so uh, sudo app get install and let's see let's say I want this package open JDK 6 JRE and uh, 6 being the current version and then it'll tell me, hey, I'm going to use 90.8 megabytes of additional disk space. Do you want to continue? I would say yes. And I'm downloading here. And we'll kind of cut to the end of this so you don't have to watch the whole thing download. Okay. So we finished downloading the runtime environment or the virtual machine. And I can test it after I use sudo app get. And I can see that if I type the command Java, I'm able to access the virtual machine.